this uh, presentation a number of examples of uh, research abstracts um, for further study analysis and evaluation. So let's uh, have a look at this uh, example, um, which is one of the humanities abstract, um, um, of course written by, uh, by me. Uh, this is my research abstract and one of my research published in, in one of the journals. Um, so if you just uh, go over the main pattern structure of this abstract, uh, you will find out that um, this abstract has met some of the um, main, let's say, um, steps uh, mentioned in some of the slides before. And also the same thing goes with this uh, sample, and this is written also um, by one of the researchers. It's a, it's a dissertation, it's about um, the impact of social movements through a multi-layered study of the Mississippi Civil Rights Movement. Um, the most important thing is that you need to examine both abstracts under um, this analytical framework. Okay, so if you would like just to analyze any type of research abstract, you should consider what the research does, how the research does it, what materials are used, and the conclusion. I'm not going to read it because it takes um, just m much time than expected. I would like just to jump to uh, another example, an example of a badly written abstract and of a well-written abstract. So please, I ask you again just to go through um, this example from humanities uh, abstract, analyze, uh, analyze it, try to understand its major components, the main uh, um, phrases used in this abstract, uh, how is this abstract structured according to whether it is structured or unstructured, descriptive or, inform uh, or informative. The same thing with this, please. Um, now let's move on to this example. Example of a badly written abstract. Um, if you just examine this abstract, you'll find out, okay, um, there are students, the, these are two examples of the same, um, of the same abstract. Uh, sample one is an example of a badly written abstract, while sample two is an example of a well written abstract. And as you can see, the underlined words in both abstracts, and the first one in, 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 in the red, and the second one in green, <clears throat> will be found below, um, showing what makes uh, these abstracts good or bad. So I will read the first one, the badly written abstract, and try to show you some sources that, um, um, that indicate why this is a bad abstract. This experiment will determine what will make enzymes effective and what will make them ineffective. We tested different samples of enzymes in um, spectrophometer and recorded their absorption rates. Um, six samples were placed in the spectrophotometer, but two contained no enzyme. These acted as plans for the other samples. And um, the reason why these words in, in red have uh, just uh, spoiled this, uh, this abstract is, is that. Let me sh share with you uh, the following document. Okay, uh, as you can see here, um, the word effective, okay, written in, in, in this one, as you can see, effective, all right? Um, this one should have been effective, not effective. Why? Because here there is a mix-up between the word <clears throat> effect and effect. 
as a verb and as a noun. The word affect is usually a verb. When we say affect, this affects is usually a verb. Something influences something else. As in the music affected the study participants' moods. An effect is, however, a noun, the thing that happened. The music had a negative effect on mood or the effect of studying is that you get a better grade than you would without studying. So this is basically what goes wrong in this, uh, in this case. Likewise, if you examine the second word, so effective here should be, eff should be effective, not effective. So uh, the same thing goes with the word ineffective. Okay, let's go and see what's wrong with this. Ineffective, this sentence is in the present tense and needs to be switched to the past tense. So let's examine it once again. This experiment will determine what will make enzymes effective, effective and what will make them ineffective. So uh, the, the main problem is that uh, this sentence is in the present and needs to be switched to the past. In addition to tense problems, the sentence does not tell the reader um, much about what is meant by the term effective. So we need um, more elaboration of this term. So what exactly is an effective and seem? So the author needs to be specific and try to tell us more about it and should not use uh, general, um, uh, general terms, all right, as, as, as we can see here. So when we analyze this um, research abstract, we can easily recognize that the author has uh, talked about these different terms uh, um, generally. I mean, he used generic terms without specifying kinds of um, uh, results, for example. When we say rates here, so what type of rates? I mean, it's, it's, uh, nothing has been, has been mentioned about rates, or very high, it was high. So how high was it? I mean, so this is also um, a very general thing. So he, he, sh he should be specific in this. That's why this is a, this is a type of bad written abstract. As for the uh, second sample of um, a well-written abstract, um, as you can see the words in red here, and sorry, in green, we have others, uh, 540, we have levels, we have rate of 95%. It, um, here it's an example of a, a, a well-written abstract, why? Because as you can see, um, the word others here, indicates that the sentence is clear and concise. Just like when we read this experiment was performed to determine the factors that positively influence and seem reaction rates, etc. To, um, to the last sentence to be more if, if effective than others. Uh, this sentence is, is quite clear and concise, telling the reader why the experiment was carried out. Um, it poses also the question of why some enzymes are more effective than others and explains that the experiment was set up to determine what causes these differences. Um, and also, um, as for 540, the sentence introduces the specific enzyme being studied and rated and how it was studied. As for the word level, levels, it's okay to use personal pronouns in this case by introducing the uh, pronoun we effectively, as you can see. Um, and, and it also defines what was done without going into great detail. So if you read just uh, starting from here, we compare the absorbance rates in samples with varying 
uh, with varying enzyme um, concentrations and a constant pH of 7 and with samples with constant enzyme concentration and varying pH levels. Right? As, as you can see here, it's, it's very clear thing. And also, when you examine the rate of um, uh, percent rate 8, these two sentences combine the results with the conclusion. This helps to make the conclusion drawn uh, from the results very clear to the reader. We also, also stated concrete numbers in the results so the reader is aware of just how much the absorption rates changed in each sample without just stating a very high rate, for example, and which is supposed to be very mysterious, I mean, right, in, in, in the previous example. Um, so, dear students, you can um, explore uh, into further details about um, what makes a, a badly or good, uh, a, a badly or well-written abstract uh, by analyzing and also evaluating the uh, major qualities that each one of them uh, meets. So let's move on. Uh, I would like also now to talk about uh, an APA uh, sample abstract page, uh, which all of you should follow. Uh, this abstract page uh, contains what uh, a kind of um, a simple uh, simple abstract. Um, as you can see here, the word abstract should be placed here, should be centered, uh, should be put in the mid of, 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 of the page and should be typed in 12 point times in your Roman, as you can see. Um, please do not indent the first um, line of the abstract in, in, uh, in, in this paragraph, right? Um, and of course, all other paragraphs in the paper I mean, in the body and, and uh, the last part of the paper should be indented, but here should not be, as you can see. Um, uh, as I told you uh, just briefly, the abstract is a brief summary of, uh, of the paper, allowing you to quickly locate uh, the main points and purpose of the paper. Um, should be between um, 150 and 250 words. Abbreviations and acronyms uh, should not be, let's say, used here unless defined earlier in, in your paper. And also, it should include some key words, okay, terminology, just to um, uh, show um, the major points of interest. Uh, there are students, you can uh, retrieve and download uh, many samples of research abstracts by just visiting uh, this OWL uh, from uh, Purdue uh, Writing Center. Um, I'm here also providing you uh, with some um, uh, cliché, as we call it in Arabic, cliché, right? Uh, for example, in the introductory sentences, uh, you should use this. This is study, this dissertation, this research aims to illuminate um, examines the role of, explores why, investigates the effects of, assesses the impact of um, this study, uh, for instance, developed and tested the idea that um, these are very, very useful and you can find many more, in fact, on just go to Google and um, try to find out more uh, phrases and, um, and sentences that, starts, that's, that, that boost your research. Um, and also, you can start with uh, some research questions by using some leading sentence that, just like this study, is guided by, by the following questions or is motivated by the following questions, or this study examines these questions and so on and so forth. Uh, this is very much important. It also, uh, you can use the following um, phrases just to mark your major findings and conclusions. And um, the last part of our presentation is just to show you very quickly how abstracts, uh, how abstracts are different from introductions. Abstract um, is the essence of the whole paper. It covers the following academic elements like background, purpose and focus, methods, results, findings and conclusions, and also recommendations and summarizes briefly the whole paper, including 
um, including your conclusions. You see, it's, uh, it's just like the outline if we talk about the descriptive, the first type of, uh, of abstract, which is descriptive. And while the introduction, it introduces the paper, okay, it covers the following elements like background, uh, purpose, proposition, okay, the claim, also uh, the point of view or thesis statement and outlines of key, uh, of key issues and also shows your scope of, of, of the study. It also introduces the reader to the main premises of your research, your problem, methodology, um, your foregrounds, issues, and also sets forth the ground for discussion on further exploration. These are the major differences. So abstracts are not introductions, uh, as you can see. So uh, briefly, um, um, an abstract is, is something similar um, to a summary, except that it is more concise and, and direct. It also gives a descriptive outline for your uh, research, uh, for your entire research paper. And um, while introduction section of your paper is more detailed, more elaborative, it states why you conducted your study, what you wanted to accomplish, and what's your hypothesis. Um, Thank you, th thank you so much indeed for your kind attention. And um, our next session will be on APA citation. Goodbye.